Okay, you guys, here's everything you need to understand about dog reactivity. Let's get into it. Okay, you guys, dog reactivity typically refers to an exaggerated response to certain triggers like other dogs, people, objects, or even noises. This response often manifests itself as barking, lunging, growling, or other intense behaviors. Reactivity isn't the same as aggression, although it can sometimes escalate into it if it is not addressed properly. Here are some key factors behind understanding dog reactivity. The first key factor to understand is fear or anxiety, okay? Reactivity often stems from fear. A dog may feel threatened by a person, another dog, or even an object and react aggressively as a defensive measure. The second key factor to understand is going to be frustration. Some dogs become reactive out of frustration, especially if they're restrained by a leash or a behind a barrier like a fence, and they want to interact with the stimulus, but can't, which leads to a buildup of frustration. Okay, you guys, the third key component here is going to be a lack of socialization, okay? Dogs that have not been properly socialized may not know how to appropriately respond to new or unfamiliar situations. This, in turn, can lead to reactivity and reactive behaviors. The fourth key component here is going to be genetics and breed tendencies. Some breeds are naturally more alert and prone to reactivity. Additionally, a, a dog's genetic predisposition can play a role in how they respond to and handle stress and triggers. As an example, guard breeds, the, they can be pretty reactive. It's just a genetic predisposition. Dogs that are traditionally known for protection, shepherds, Rottweilers, Mastiffs, and so on and so forth. The fifth key component that we need to understand is going to be trauma or negative experiences, okay? A dog that has had bad experiences like being attacked by another dog on the leash uh, may become reactive as a result of that trauma. So it's really important that we're being mindful of our environment when we walk our dog out on a leash and we want to do what we can to minimize the probability of loose dogs attacking our dog and creating some trauma. Okay, so what can we do? Our dog is reactive on the leash. What are some training tips and management uh, concepts that we can use in order to minimize uh, our dog's reactivity? Well, the first thing to do is going to be to identify the triggers, okay? Um, we want to figure out what specifically triggers our dog's reactivity, whether it be other dogs, cyclists, objects, cars, other animals, and certain noises. The second concept in regards to managing and reducing reactivity is going to be the consideration for uh, desensitization and counter conditioning, okay? Gradual exposure to the trigger in a controlled environment paired with positive reinforcement can help the dog associate the trigger with positive experiences instead of fear and frustration. So consider desensitization and counter conditioning. The third thing would be to focus on calm behaviors, okay? Reward calm and non-reactive behaviors. This will help your dog understand that remaining calm brings rewards. Okay, the fourth tip here is gonna be to actually um, consider training redirection, okay? Teaching your dog to an alternate behavior can be really helpful. Asking your dog to sit and stay and pay attention to you or walk by the particular trigger while paying attention to you um, or even just ignoring the potential trigger can all bring the dog rewards and can redirect their energy away from reacting. So consider, consider training redirection. The fifth tip here for managing and reducing reactivity is going to be to use the proper equipment, okay? You want to consider whatever piece of equipment is going to be help you be the most successful in regards to redirecting the dog's energy. So whether this is a front clip harness, 
whether this is a gentle leader, an electric collar, a metal collar, uh, a food, it does not matter. Find the tools that work the best for you in your particular situation and what is going to help you set you up for success. Regardless of your perception of these things, you must make these considerations. Of course, the sixth and final tip for managing and reducing reactivity is going to be to consider seeking professional help, okay? Find a dog trainer in your area that has experience with this, that has written reviews online about their success in helping an owner and their dog with their reactivity. It's okay to call for help. We all need help occasionally from time to time, and you may be the one that needs that help. So consider calling a dog trainer. In closing, understanding the re that reactivity is often rooted in fear or frustration is the key to managing it, okay? With patience, reward-based training, the thoughtful use of punishment, many dogs can improve their response and feel more secure in stressful situations. We hope this video helped you. Definitely uh, subscribe to the channel and we'll see you in the next video. Peace.